Hey guys, I just saw The Batman, which was my third most anticipated film of the year. And I was a little disappointed by it. Um, I actually had similar problems with it, as I did The Joker. Overall, I liked it, and uh, this will be a non-spoiler review with a spoiler section or two. Uh, and I will warn you when it gets to that point. So um, yeah, let's not waste any time, let's get into it. Just to preface that I liked the movie, The Batman, which was directed by Matt Reeves, had some really, really strong elements to it. Uh, it had a really fantastic car chase scene, it was a breath of fresh air in the vast catalog of superhero movies. It had a style and a sense of self that was stuck throughout the entire film. The, um, the casting was overall really, really incredible and the performance is really great, um, but it did have some problems. So, The Batman was very obviously inspired by movies that were coming out of the 70s, sort of the neo-noir crime films like The Conversation, The French Connection, uh, Chinatown. It was also inspired by David Fincher films like Seven and Zodiac. I love David Fincher, he's one of my favorite directors, and there's nothing much better than a gritty, mean 70s crime film. But as I watched The Batman, I was thinking I might as well re-watch The French Connection. I might as well rewatch Seven. In fact, here was my review for Letterbox. <laughs> I compared the Batman with the movie Joker earlier, and my problem with Joker, like many others, was that it was derivative of films like Taxi Driver and King Comedy. I would absolutely not describe the Batman as derivative, but what I didn't like about it was that it felt like a boiled down version of the movies that it was inspired by, rather than directly taking from them. Let's take the first shot of this film, for example. The very first shot of the Batman is a very disoriented POV shot of Batman looking through a window of a wealthy family. We see a kid getting ready to trick or treat with his mom and dad. This is very much like the first shot of the conversation. Not derivative, but definitely an inspiration. When you compare the two shots, I think that the conversation comes out on top. It's more mysterious, it's unsettling, it's more unique, patient. This is not at the fault of the Batman, it's an inspiration, it's not the same thing. It's not even trying to do the same thing, you could argue. But that's what happens when your first shot of your film is sort of a homage to another film. I'm going to compare the two, if I've seen both of them, and... The classic is probably going to be better. Not always, but that tends to be what happens when you take from a classic film. Another example was the Riddler, who was the main antagonist of the Batman. He was very much inspired by characters like John Doe in Seven, as well as both Jokers in the film Joker and The Dark Knight. The spice and quality of those characters very much boils down to what happens in the Riddler in both dialogue, acting, and the dynamics of the character and the protagonist. The Riddler is not as interesting because anything interesting about that character can be attributed to those three characters that I just mentioned, who I think are all better. But the thing about Batman that disappointed me the most was how underwhelming the political corruption angle turned out to be. I watch a movie like Chinatown and I go, wow, that is messed up. Then I'll watch a movie like... Even Nick Cage's Snake Eyes, and I'll think, uh, and it's a movie that probably takes the corruption less seriously, but it still makes me feel the emotional weight and the shame towards the behavior of the political character. The Batman boiled down completely to the mob ran the government for decades, um, cops knew about drugs, and Thomas Wayne hired a mobster to kill a journalist that was talking shit about. Him. In theory, these are all very severe, but when you look at uh, relative to other movies, and even the history of political corruption and mob involvement in the US, it just doesn't hit hard at all. The mob running the government wasn't a shock at the beginning at all. Um, cops knowing about drugs wasn't a shock because it was obvious that they were being run by the mob, and Thomas Wayne putting a hit on a journalist is very interesting, but because of just how much hype there was with the Riddler, um, talking shit about the Wayne family and talking about how they suck in the movie, uh, it just did not end up becoming as bad as I expected it to be. There aren't many movies like the Batman out thematically speaking, so it does seem fresh, it does seem a little more surprising, but in the grand scheme of films, uh, when you look at its inspirations, it just feels like the common denominator and not like a 
twerking off of any of them. Another thing I was let down with was the music for Michael Giacchino. Uh, if you follow me on Twitter, you've heard me complain about him maybe twice. Uh, but it is seriously bizarre to me how this guy is considered one of the best composers working today. I mean, to me, I mean, I don't hate the guy. But he's just a jack-of-all-trades master of none composer who just gets by with everything he does. The theme for Batman is just a wish.com version of the Darth Vader theme, and almost everything in the film falls flat. It does the job, but it's just not special. I know, I'm gonna get some trash for this if I haven't gotten a bunch of trash already, but I did not like the cinematography. I didn't, and I'm not a huge fan of the cinematographer Greg Frazier. Um, the look this film reminded me of Dune when it came to the shot composition and the lighting, which I also did not like, and ultimately my problems come down to the fact that this film did not really have a sense of scope, um, and I did not really feel immersed into Gotham, and I feel like the cinematography had a lot to do with that. Uh, Greg Frazier has made some really stunning movies like Lion, Bright Star, and I would say Dune, and the Batman definitely has its stunning, memorable moments, but overall... Uh, it could have been more interesting. And while most of the performances were great, I thought some of the performances were also quite weak. Uh, Paul Dano is a strong victim of overacting, and you can see that in movies like 12 Years a Slave, Little Miss Sunshine, where he literally plays a guy who doesn't talk, and uh, even There Will Be Blood. He's done a lot of great work in movies like Love and Mercy, uh, Prisoners, and There Will Be Blood. But he fumbles as a Riddler. I could not take him seriously with all his screaming and overacting. I like Zoe Kravitz, but her dialogue was not good. And it felt like it was straight out of a video game cutscene, in my opinion. John Turturro is absolutely fucking awesome, and I wanted more from him. Jeffrey Wright, I think, is my favorite performance of the movie, and he quickly shut up any moron who said that he was only casted because he was black. Uh, Colin Farrell completely transformed. Uh, Pattinson was also really, really great, and I want to see more movies from him, and I would love to see him as Batman again and again. Pattinson and Andy Serkis were also really great, and I wanted to see more scenes with them together. Matt Reeves. Do not do what Snyder did and give us crumbs of Alfred and Matt. I want to see more Andy Serkis. Please. Please. Well, that's the review. I overall really liked... I, I liked the Batman. I liked it had some problems, but it mostly had its good qualities to it. Uh, please leave a like, subscribe, and most importantly, comment what did you think? What do you disagree with? What do you agree with? Love to hear what you have to say. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next upload.